Let's now get a wrap up of the international news with Simon Pilsay. Standing by with more around the world in five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. The number of people killed in the Easter Sunday suicide bombings in Sri Lanka has been significantly revised down. The health ministry initially put the figure at 359, but it now believes just over 250 people died during the coordinated attack, blaming the error on difficulties identifying the victims. The country's president, whose vow to stamp Islamic State from Sri Lanka says 70 people have been arrested and police are still searching for 140 suspects. Amongst tight security, the hunt continues. 70 people have already been arrested for the blasts on Easter Sunday, but many suspects remain. People here living in constant fear of more attacks. The message from their president, have faith. Specialists from some countries are working jointly with our security forces, but we will not have any foreign forces on our ground. We have a lot of faith in our security forces because they, the armed forces and the police, were the same forces that brought the Tamil separatists down. I am sure they can destroy this too. One impact of the hunt for IS is this. Over 200 Pakistani people forced from their homes, fearing retaliatory violence. Arriving in their new town, they faced more threats from locals. Meanwhile, photos of the alleged bombers continue to be released by authorities. This is footage of the suspected ringleader Zahran Hashim at the Shangri-La Hotel. He and another alleged attacker walk into the restaurant. Shortly after, they detonate their explosives. But some positive news was revealed earlier by the country's finance minister. We got some good news for Sri Lanka today. The Millennium Challenge Corporation, the MCC, has approved the biggest grant funding ever received by Sri Lanka. The Millennium Challenge Corporation of the US government has approved a grant of 480 million US dollars to Sri Lanka. It's funding that is desperately needed, not just to find those responsible, but also to rebuild what was once a peaceful way of life. Tens of thousands of passengers have been left stranded following a strike in northern Europe. Scandinavian airline SAS cancelled hundreds of flights globally after pilots in Norway, Sweden and Denmark walked off the job over a pay dispute. SAS, which hopes to restart the negotiations with the unions, says the action could also affect passengers over the weekend. A huge crash has closed a major interstate highway in Colorado. Police say multiple people were killed when a lorry careered out of control, smashing into several vehicles before bursting into flames. Dozens of others were injured. It took emergency crews hours to extinguish the fire, making it difficult to immediately confirm the number of casualties. Mozambique has been hit by a second devastating storm, Cyclone Kenneth making landfall just weeks after Idai tore through the country. The cyclone brought storm surges and wind gusts of up to 280 kilometers per hour. Officials in the main town on the island Ibo say 90% of homes have been destroyed and around 15,000 people are now exposed to the elements or staying in overcrowded shelters. The United Nations has voiced concerns over further shortages in humanitarian aid. There's no record of two storms of such intensity striking Mozambique. In the same season, Mozambique is obviously a developing country. Um, uh, this is, you know, a major blow to its sustainable development. Cyclone Kenneth may require a major new humanitarian operation at the same time that the ongoing Cyclone Edai response targeting three million people in three countries remain critically underfunded. The UK's Prince William is urging the world to unite and fight the violent brand of extremism which led to the New Zealand terror attack last month. The Duke of Cambridge, who's in the country for two days representing the Queen, visited the mosques where 50 people were killed by a lone gunman. To the people of New Zealand, and the people of Christchurch, to our Muslim community and all those who have rallied to your side. I stand with you in gratitude for what you have taught the world these past weeks. President Trump says he'll beat Joe Biden easily in the 2020 presidential election. His comments follow the Democrats' announcement that he's joining the race for the White House. If elected, Biden will become the oldest president in U.S. history. I just feel like a young man. I'm so young. I can't believe it. I'm the youngest person. I am a young, vibrant man. 
I look at Joe. I don't know about him. I don't know. I would never say anyone's too old, but I know they're all making me look very young, both in terms of age and I think in terms of energy. And finally, the first pig cafe has opened its doors in Tokyo. Customers are allowed to embrace the animals, known as teacup pigs, while enjoying coffee and dessert. They're young, aged about two to four months, and weigh less than five kilograms. Visitors say they're therapeutic and help to relieve stress. And that's your international news around the world in five. Thank you, Simon. I also did by Logan has sports news. And thanks, Gimba. As the world celebrates the intellectual property day, practitioners in the field have asked sports administrators in Nigeria to harness the business potentials. With this year's theme, Reach a Four Goal Intellectual Property and the Business for Sports, and participants at this event in Lagos say they want the country to start seeing sports beyond just competing at tournaments but to explore the business values. Lobby Star's chief executive Mike Idoko has revealed why he thinks Nigerian clubs have struggled at cow club competitions over the years. League champions Lobby Stars and FA Cup winners Rangers both failed to progress beyond the group stage of the Champions League and Confederations Cup. Idoko said Nigerian clubs must overhaul their current financial structure. PSG has been, or PSG striker rather, Neymar, has been suspended for a three Champions League games for insulting match officials following the French side's elimination from the competition. Neymar labored the video assistant referee, the VAR, system a disgrace after Man United were awarded the decisive last gap penalty to advance into the quarterfinals on the away goals rule. And that's a wrap on sports news. The news at 10 continues shortly. And the main news again, the Kaduda state government today announced a 24-hour curfew in Kajuru council area following fears of fresh crisis. That's all been on the news at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for watching. I'm Gimba Omar on behalf of all of us. Have a splendid weekend. Good night.